Welcome to Built and Deployed, the video series where we talk to Oracle customers so that they can walk us through the architectures of the systems they have built and deployed on the Oracle Cloud infrastructure. My name is Bob Piper. I'm a technical program manager in OCI. And with me today is Edwin Flores from Alliance Data Systems. Well, thank you so much for joining. We're really looking forward to learning how your system works. Uh, but first of all, could you tell us a little bit about Alliance Data Systems and your role there? Sure, absolutely. So Alliance Data is one of the, as you mentioned earlier, one of the leading financial services company. And we service a lot of uh, retailers uh, in, in their quest to uh, mine the, the enormous amounts of data that they have about, regarding their customers. So we definitely help uh, with that, um, anything to do with loyalty programs as well. Um, so we are very, very data oriented, as we say, uh, within the company. Uh, my role is as in the infrastructure team and we oversee our cloud platforms, which includes the Oracle Cloud. Thanks. Uh, well, so can you tell us about the workloads that you were running on-premises before you moved into OCI? Right, right. So we, we did have an entire suite of Oracle applications that we have been running for, for quite some time on on-premise hardware, uh, mainly Exadata. And so uh, about a couple of years ago, we were at a crossroads with the numerous factors that came to um, came to our attention that needed to be addressed. Um, one of which was that data center move that we were doing at the same time, as well as a uh, hardware refresh that was upon us. And the decision was made uh, to go with Oracle Cloud at that time, mainly because we wanted to keep the Oracle applications on Oracle um, provided backbone as well, which Oracle Cloud provided for us. And in cost too, uh, we wanted to simplify our cost structure as when it came to, um, when it came to Oracle products. And so um, I'm glad to say that uh, we have achieved the, that uh, sim simplicity and achieved those goals that we, we set out to do. Love it. That's great. Well, let's jump right into the architecture diagram. Uh, so as we look into our, uh, our architecture diagram for Hyperion, we were uh, able to s segregate the different tiers uh, within the Hyperion stack. We separated the um, web and app layer onto its own subnet, and then we separated the the database layer as well. And the reason for that is we wanted to achieve a greater granularity when it came to security, most importantly. Uh, the security requirements around the database layer can be different than what's, uh, what may the, the application may need. Because of the segmentation, we can, um, we can reach that requirement and fulfill that requirement um, by doing that. We put everything in one availability domain uh, we put all the Hyperion uh, S-based servers as well as the foundation. We also utilize a load balancer uh, as far as access into that application. So we kept it simple. We wanted to put everything in one central location, um, uh, which would make it simple to, to scale in the future if we needed to. It's definitely one of the decisions we had to make in the beginning is you know Fast Connect over or a VPN, and the decision was made to go with Fast Connect just because of the the I/O throughput and requirements that this application needed as far as its user base. This is something that we service throughout the enterprise, and so it was very important to to get the performance of Fast Connect. Uh, so that that decision was made to make that investment. So we have Fast Connect from our data center into Oracle Cloud OCI. The traffic comes in through uh, Fast Connect, and we were able to set up a load balancer that kind of is the front door to the application. Uh, from there, uh, the traffic kind of flows through um, the foundation servers that um, that, that that Hyperion utilizes. Uh, in the back end are the Hyperion, or the um, sorry, the S based servers that uh, kind of do all the ground work and do uh, the interaction with with uh, the database. And uh, in, in in this case, we went with. Um, the SQL Server as our um, database layer, and that's the interface between the S-based servers and the database servers. We also employ a file server that we had to implement as well. So I see, you know, two foundation servers and then three S-based. Is that is that for HA or what? Uh, what's going on with that? Right, a combination. Uh, some of it is for HA, but also there's different modules that uh, within Hyperion that. Uh, that we use some for forecasting, some for reporting, um, and we were able to split that out. Uh, some S base servers utilize or, or will support one module, whereas others another module. Um, so we came down to this. We wanted to make it as um, simple, and we didn't want to over provision ourselves with too many, too many servers. So we came down with this number. We settled upon this number uh, to be the minimum that we could uh, support the entire application. 
What's your favorite technical advantage of having moved to OCI? Uh, I really enjoy uh, having more control over the, or what seems like more control over the architecture. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have to worry so much on the on, on certain layers, for example, the, the uh, virtualization layer as much, but we can focus in on things that we really want to, to do, which is more the network layer and uh, at the at the network and application layer and above. So having having that control to spin things up as as needed and and on demand is really benefit has been really beneficial to us what's next for alliance on oci well we want to go we want to mature right in our, in our um, cloud footprint so we want to start looking into some of the features that uh, you know oci has recently started to roll out especially in the autonomous space we want to you know, see uh, what benefits we can get there uh, and move away from the infrastructure as a service and more higher up the stack into maybe platform or service uh, service oriented offerings. So that's that's really what's next on our on our plate. Well, thank you so much for joining, Edwin, and look yeah, forward so, to talking to you again. Thank you. And Appreciate thank it. you all so much for joining us on Built and Deployed. And please tune in again for more technical conversations with our customers. Thank you very much.